as all these early product launches get confirmed, like seriously, we got to hand it to leakers. They have been on a roll. Because yes, Samsung just sent out presentations for their next Unpacked, and we have everything you need to know about the S21 series. Ming Shi Kuo is back at it again, telling us which products to expect for Apple this year. And even with all the roadblocks, Huawei might be the first company to deliver on new processor technology. I'm Jaime Rivera, and uh, seriously, those of you that thought that 2021 was just going to be this reset button for the pandemic, yeah, no. Let's just continue wearing a mask. This is Pocket Now Daily. Let's begin the year with deals, and since we're getting close to Samsung's Galaxy Unpacked, of course, those are the first deals that we're going to get. If you're looking for a Galaxy device and you have another device for trade-in, Samsung's Black Friday deals are still live, leaving the Galaxy Z Fold 2 at $1,000, you can get the Galaxy Note 20 series for as low as $400, and then the S20 Ultra for $600, but again, you need a device for trade-in. Now, if you don't have one of these, there's also Amazon. You can get the Galaxy S20 FE for $100 off, leaving it at 600 the Note 20 Ultra for $200 off, leaving it at 1100 And if you want the Galaxy S20 Ultra for some weird reason, that's $300 off, leaving it also at 1100 Now moving on to Apple deals, the 16-inch MacBook Pro is $200 off, which means it starts at $2,200 for the 16 gigs of RAM, 512 gigs of storage variant. We have more deals on Apple Watches, iPads, and Razer peripherals in the links in the description. Now let's move on to OnePlus, as for the longest time we've been covering rumors of the company working on getting into the wearables market. Rumors point more specifically to a smartwatch, but it looks like they might launch something before that. Last week, some rumors of the OnePlus ban popped up, and now we have the company's official Twitter confirming it. The tweet reads, This year, we are here to help you achieve all of your fitness goals and make your life easier. It shows a slight angle of the bottom left corner of the band, and this fitness band will reportedly bring an AMOLED display with multi-day battery life. It will first debut in India for around 40 bucks. Suddenly, grinders on Twitter show that we'll be getting three different color variants, black, orange, and blue, and it kind of does look like the Oppo band, like seriously. Now, we don't know exactly when we're getting the band, but, you know, it's our best bet is that we're just going to get everything whenever the next OnePlus 9 gets announced, so we'll keep you posted. Now, how about if we move on to Huawei as, yes, the company has had a terrible 2020, and uh, it's just interesting to see that the company continues to push boundaries with new developments. We know that for the past couple of years, Huawei has been dealing with some major roadblocks ever since they got banned in the United States, but that doesn't stop the company from delivering on some good phones and chips. Well, according to a tipster on Twitter, Huawei's next generation chip will be the Kirin 9010, and it will be based on a three nanometer process. For reference, the Kirin 9000 and 9000 ESOCs are both based on the five nanometer process, as well as the major flagship chips in the market like the A14, Bionic, and the Snapdragon 888. Now, this is a pretty huge deal, as a couple of weeks ago, we covered how Apple is looking into the three nanometer process as well, but that wouldn't happen until like 2022, and this year they would only upgrade to four nanometers which is far better than intel now at the moment we have no confirmation for this information and huawei is still facing some pretty big challenges with their united states ban which has led to a shortage of supplies for them and we wonder if they could even use the technology because even that was banned we do have their own ceo claiming that last year could have been the last year for Karen flagship chips so it gets interesting so yes let's take this with a grain of salt but hey i mean i hope it happens more competition the better and moving on to Apple for a couple of segments, let's discuss the company's plan for foldables, and I join you in being as skeptical about the topic. Last week, we heard some rumors from John Prosser claiming that Cupertino was testing two different designs for a foldable iPhone, and apparently those testing results are in. According to the Economic Daily News, Apple has been testing two foldable designs in a Foxconn factory in Shenzhen, with a possible result coming from both designs. They claimed that the tests were conducted to see if the hinge system for both devices would hold up against every everyday use, and apparently they both passed. According to Prosser, these two devices consist of a dual display module with a hinge, along with a new clamshell that could compete with the Z Flip or the Razer. This clamshell will reportedly bring one of Samsung's flexible OLED panels, as they've apparently already sent some samples to Apple for early testing. Now, finally, Prosser claims that we should wait until 2022 or 2023 for any products to be visible, but it's just crazy how these rumors continue to ramp up so quickly. 
Now, let's move back a little and start talking about 2021, particularly for Apple's roadmap. According to Ming-Chi Kuo's latest research note, Apple plans to release their long-awaited AirTags, an unspecified augmented reality device, and other products this year. If you haven't been paying attention, AirTags are Apple's tile-like item tracker, which will help you keep track of your belongings through the Find My application. Prosser just shared some renders of the AirTags that reportedly came from a software engineer at Apple that show a very clean and polished look, which looks pretty much like the renders we've seen before. Prosser claims that AirTags are done when it comes to production, but they were delayed due to the pandemic. Now back to Quo, when it comes to the augmented reality device, Apple is reportedly working on a reality headset, glasses or both, but Quo didn't specify which one would we get. And we know that iPhones and iPads also bring LiDAR, so it could mean that we're just getting new features on iPhones as well. It's hard to tell. Finally, Quo also added that Cupertino has plans to release new AirPods, more Apple Silicon Macs, and their first devices with mini LED displays, which should be a new 12.9 inch iPad along with some MacBook models and probably even the iMac. Let's see what we get on Apple's possible March event, or let's see if the company joins the crowd of having launch events earlier, because most of these products actually sound pretty interesting. And finally, the hottest news today have to do with Samsung, the Galaxy S21, and the fact that we have a lot to unpack. Man, that pun was terrible, Diego, like seriously. Let's begin with the fact that the company just sent out press invitations for their unpacked event that will happen virtually on January 14th. Now the invitation is titled, Welcome to the Everyday Epic, and it features a spinning cube which has the S21's camera hump floating on it. It actually looks pretty cool, but now when it comes to the S21 Ultra, we are expecting a 6.8 inch display running at 120 Hertz that'll be powered by the Snapdragon 888 or the Exynos 2100, 12 gigs of RAM, and up to 512 gigs of storage. And when it comes to cameras, we have some new official looking renders from Evan Blass that detail the cameras. Since we are talking ultra, we hear a 108 megapixel main sensor, two 10 megapixel telephotos, 12 megapixel ultra wide, and a 40 megapixel selfie shooter, which is making a comeback, along with laser autofocus. Finally, let's talk about the S Pen as it's been the biggest hint that Samsung is getting rid of the Note line. Now we have some new renders from Win Future that claim that the S Pen will be sold separately and you'll have to carry it on a special case. Now judging by the renders, the S Pen will look more like the ones you get on the Samsung tablets and not necessarily as small as the Note series with a rounded top. The S Pen will reportedly sell for around 50 bucks and we have no word on the case or the price tag just yet. The Galaxy S21 Ultra will reportedly cost $12.99 and you're not getting headphones or a charge adapter according to everything we've seen. Let us know in the comments down below, are you going for the S21 Ultra or are you getting any other variant from the S21 of anything? Because in my case, I mean, if it's going to support the S Pen, I'm definitely going Ultra, but that's just me. Leave us a comment down below, we'd love to know your opinion. Friends, again, if you want to get the news earlier, follow us on PocketNow.com and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this one. Also, follow us on social medias. Our extended coverage happens on Instagram. And follow me on my personal handles to see me do the right thing. Please give this video a thumbs up if you like what you saw. I'm Jaime Rivera. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.